everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I guess you are as curious as I am when it comes to my orchids, seeing how are they progressing? How are they growing? So how's it growing? Really appreciate your time. I'm going to show you today what I look for so that I can judge how are my growths doing. With orchids, everything is so slow. We anticipate blooms, but in the meantime, we need to get growth in order to get blooms. And seeing as everything takes so much longer, I'm always the one that's sort of like fussing and checking over my orchids if they are growing new growths, so I can see what is the potential of this growth and will it possibly bloom in future or not? I'm not here now to predict whether I am going to have blooms on any of the orchids I'm going to show you, but I'm going to show you what you can look out for to further increase your anticipation levels if you don't have enough of those already. I'm always watching my orchids to see if my fertilizer levels are correct. One of the ways I gauge that is to make sure that my pots do not accumulate salts on the surface. So that means that my levels are correct and the orchid is absorbing exactly what I'm giving it. There is no excess fertilizer in the pot, but it could also be that I'm under fertilizing the orchid. There's absolutely no chance for salts to accumulate because the orchid is just gobbling everything up, but then it needs more, which I may not be giving it, but I can gauge what the orchid is doing by watching how the growths are developing. And then I can still intervene and possibly give it more fertilizer if need be. That is what I'm going to show you today. There are some very, very simple examples, and most of them are on the table here today. There are some examples I can show you where it's not as clear and obvious, but I'm going to talk about those as well so that you can sort of gauge what your orchid is doing based on the examples that are not so obvious. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope that the next time you look at your collection, you go, oh, wow, just like I'm going to do today. <laughs> if the wind interferes with the mic, I do apologize. I am in a breezeway and I can't move at this point and it's just picked up. Anyway, let's get going. Right, how are my growths doing? How can I know whether I'm giving them enough fertilizer or not? How can I anticipate, predict that they're gonna be growing to size or happy days, even a bit bigger than the previous growth? So let's start with Cattleya bicolor. This growth right here is the newest growth. It is a new acquisition of 2021. It's been through a lot of little examples with regards to potting up, but here we have a new growth. How is the orchid doing? What can I expect from this growth? Is it getting enough fertilizer? Because now I know it's got roots in the pot. Please forgive the natural fertilizer that is on the pot. That has nothing to do with salt accumulation on my LECA, as you can see. But look, this is what I wanted to point out to you. Do you see how this growth is growing? And I'm not looking at the height of the leaf as opposed to the mature leaf, because clearly it still has a ways to go but I can tell that it's getting enough of the fertilizer quantity that I'm putting into the pot because of where the leaf bract is. And compare that to what is going on here. This is the latest growth that came with the orchid, the most mature one. And if I look at this leaf bract, it's a clear indicator how tall the pseudobulb is going to be when it is fully matured. Now, this growth is clearly not done growing yet, but from the potential, what I can tell, even though I'm like a finger off the ultimate height to match the previous growth, I can already see by this bract here that we are on track with the size of the growth, with the quantity of the fertilizer. Nothing is on the surface of the pot and the growth is really chugging along and it will match the size of its previous growth based on the bract here. And that is your indicator on orchids like cattleyas and cichlias and also any kind of sympodial orchids that have pseudobulbs and a rhizome. Here's another example. She's a little bit smaller. But you see, I have a little bit of fertilizer residue on the pot here. This is the latest growth coming up and look where that bract is right here. That is the leaf joint. Clearly the growth has not finished maturing, but look at the size of the previous growth right there. Hmm. I'm going to call this early. I'm going to say that this growth is going to be smaller than the previous growth because of the time of year that it started to grow and climate has changed. It's a bit cooler. It doesn't have the same conditions as the, as the previous growth. It's going to give me roots anyway, but 
my prediction here, look, you see that bract? That is my indicator for the pseudobulb. And then I normally give it another centimeter or two. Uh, we're not gonna make the previous growth height, but I'm not gonna add more fertilizer either because I've got some mineral buildup on the top. I'm boiling this down to the time of year. But this bract as well, my indicator. How are you growing? Not disappointed, it's just the time of year. So there's nothing to worry about here. Here's a Lelia perparata, for example. Stonking new growth. The previous growth was not the size it should have been to the growth that bloomed, but this orchid went through a massive cleanup, so that's to be expected. I am not concerned the fact that this growth was not to size, but it produced roots. Now the next growth on, look at this. We are back on track. Do you see the bract right here? Even though the leaf has only just appeared, I can already gauge the size of the growth by the bract line that's right here, plus another centimeter or two. And that is the general rule. When you anticipate or predict the size of your growth, if the growth is at this stage, not quite mature, another centimeter or two will make the difference to its final height. And then comparing that to the size of the growth in the back, you can see we are back in business. It should bloom. Whether it's going to or not is not of my concern at this point in time. It's the time of year that this is growing. It probably won't bloom, but at least we can predict the end size based on the bract that we've got here which has already matched the previous pseudobulbs maturity, and then we're gonna get an even bigger growth out of it this time. So this is why I'm saying I love looking at my orchids and seeing how they're performing and if they need more fertilizer or not, because I know based on how this growth is progressing, I don't need to add more fertilizer. Everything is going great in the pot and the size of that growth, oh, it makes me so happy to be able to see that. And that's why I wanted to share these little observations with you. So maybe you get the same joy when you go to your shells or your orchids and you see new growths and you go, oh my goodness, look what's happening. Look what's coming. The next example is another perparata because this is going so well and I hope I'm not being too repetitive, but there's different stages of growth that we can anticipate and watch. So we figured this one out. Look at this one here. We have the bract right here and the leaf is just coming out of the bract. Now, the previous growth is up here. So I'm gonna call this early, but you see that where that leaf is poking out. This bract is the indicator of where the future pseudobulb will be protected as it develops. And then you can peel this bract off once it is matured and hardened. But you see the size of this growth already. We have another one or two centimeters to go and it's gonna be the same size as the previous growth, simply by looking at where is the bract, where is the leaf coming out, and then thinking of the one or two centimeters. And this is why I like going through my collection. <laughs> how are you growing, how are you growing? Let's go with Tenebrosa here. I have a sheath, another one on Lelia Tenebrosa. We'll see if this one blooms, but that's not the point of this exercise. Look at where that bract is, right here. Check that out, same height. This is promising, the orchid is doing well, getting enough fertilizer, and even though the pseudobulb has not formed yet, this is the height of my pseudobulb, and we've matched it. No need to change anything with this orchid whatsoever, no mineral deposits or anything on the surface of the leka. Everything is under control, same height, just by looking at where that bract is. You know you're doing well when you have to step back a bit. <laughs> Check this one out, all right? <laughs> Never bloomed for me, this orchid. This is another Lelia perparata. Look at this. If we're going by the bract, as I mentioned earlier, look at where it is up here. Yes, we've got a sheath coming out. I'm not holding my breath, but check this out. Look at the previous growth. It wasn't too shabby at all, but look here. We have got ourselves another like five centimeters of growth out of the growth of this season. And it is amazing to see how even while I was watching this happening throughout the season, I already knew this growth is gonna surpass all the other growths. It's insane. Even the growth in the back that was larger than the one I grew last season right here, it surpassed that one. So that, that's all the perparatas out of the way. I have some more examples. If you're still here, 
thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. But let's look at a cross here that is the Fu Shu Happy Holiday. Look at this. Do we have to step back again? Maybe a little bit. Woohoo! <laughs> I like it. Check this out. Look, the growth here has not matured yet. This one is the mature one from previously, and it's got a full sheath. <laughs> Happy days. But look at where that bract is. Compare that to the one next door, the previous one, and you can already tell, based on where that bract is, where that pseudobulb is going to come out and mature, and then add another one or two centimeters. This growth is a stonker. Incredible. No mineral buildup on the surface of the pot. A massive growth. This pot is doing well. All the indicators are there. It's absorbing all the fertilizer it's getting. I don't need to add fertilizer. Clearly, we're on the right track with this one just by looking at where the bract is and comparing it to its predecessor. If the predecessor was smaller because of a cleanup, not a problem. Go back one more. So there's so many indicators that we can anticipate what our orchids are going to do as they grow their growths and while we wait for blooms. This is just me trying to share what I do in my collection so that you get the same like yay factor that I get when I look at my orchids or you get the same, oh my goodness, no, I can intervene if a growth is growing smaller than it should be based on the previous year's growth if you haven't cleaned up the root system, rejuvenated the root system, divided the orchid, interfered with it in any way. More often than not, all these interferences will actually impede the next growth to mature fully, but that is to be expected. And if it doesn't, happy days, but if it does, that's not a problem. Right, one that we haven't seen a lot of. Here's my Inobulbum, well, Dendrobium munificum, but let's get in a little bit closer. Not because the growth is smaller, but the orchid as such is. Here is a different example. <clears throat> bulbs. We'll just go with bulbs. You can see, this is what I got when I got the orchid. This was the largest bulb I got. And then subsequent years, the bulbs were somewhat small as she was acclimating. But I want to show you what is happening now. Look at this. <laughs> All right, let me reposition myself. This is the bulb. I mentioned is the biggest one. Look at the bract on this one. Look at where that bract is. She has not finished growing. This is the biggest bulb ever in all the years that I've had this orchid. Looking at the previous bulbs and comparing them, even though they are mature and this one has not matured yet, I can see by the height of the bract where we are headed with this growth. Yeah, I, I do want blooms. Honestly, I do. But there's such a long waiting period when you grow orchids between whatever happens and then the blooms last two or three weeks, maybe four if you're lucky. Some orchids, five months. But more often than not, we are waiting for blooms. And what do we do during the time period while we wait? Well, I go around my collection and look for signs like these and find great pleasure in seeing something like this happening. And I hope that this video helps you as well. Get inspired, go to your collection, check out the new growth, especially all of you that are heading into spring and see where are my bracts. Now, before anybody gets upset and says, well, my growths don't grow like that. Well, let me show you how you can still be enthusiastic and take out of the equation any of the interferences I mentioned earlier, repotting, dividing, cleaning up the root system, etc. Acclimating is also a subject we need to take into consideration when we get our organs into our collection, because the majority of us are not in a climate where they grow in the wild at least not the ones we're cultivating at home. So this is my Catliantha white bridal, just arrived this year in 2021 as well, and needed a massive root cleanup. It was literally disturbed and is now being transitioned into LECA and self-watering. Well, what am I enthusiastic about here? Because if we're going by the principle of bracts, eh, that's not going to be very good, is it? This is the end of the bract right here, and she is super sticky. Right, so end of the bract here, but look at where the growth is previously. It's all the way up here. This example, clearly, it's not going to reach the same height as my previous growth, but that is to be expected based on the stress factors I just mentioned now. But to get away from that, at least you've got a lot of happy sap 
I've got roots growing. The back bulbs are not declining. Even the roots that looked so pathetic on the repot are actually hydrating the orchid while she's doing all of this. So this is for me just a yay factor as a stonking growth that we saw on the happy holiday back there. This makes me happy. She's not gonna bloom for me on this growth, but that's not the point. The anticipation of seeing how she's getting established and the fact that the bract is already up here, probably her next growth will bloom. So I'm going to show you an example where it is a bit more difficult to be able to anticipate and go, yay, this growth is the same, smaller, or going to be the same. Let's look at a dendrobium cane. Just want to point something out. You see this reflection here? All this reflection? I'm not using a flashlight. This is what I speak of when I talk about my facade all being white, reflecting a lot of light. So despite the orchids being in shade, look at how much light they're getting. That's quite incredible. Anyway, <laughs> back to dendrobiums. This is a little bit more difficult to be able to anticipate any kind of progress, but we can still see some signs. And this is a recovering orchid from this season after I messed up the root system, wanting to grow her in Lekka and self-watering. That didn't work. So we are on a rescue mission here. Well, let me correct that. We have rescued this orchid because all the new roots are into the lava rock. This is lava rock and self-watering. And I've got more new roots now coming from this cane. So what is going on here? Well, at the base, this is the growth right here that I grew in my care last year in 2020. And it never made it to the full size of how I got the orchid. That is the top of that growth. And that is the top of the cane that is the longest, but it was fatter. So I'll take that, it was fatter. So that's, this is my margin right now because the base of my new cane right here is quite chubby as well. So I'm looking for size, thickness of the growth as it comes out. Is the eye really chubby or is it a little thin spiddly thing? Even if it is a thin spiddly little eye, let me tell you that is not a problem. Every growth that makes it will produce new roots. If, for example, I were to have damaged this growth halfway, it would still produce new roots and then it would produce another eye. It is annoying if that happens, but as long as we get roots out of our orchids, the next growth will be much more substantial. But here I have a growth, for example, it hasn't finished growing yet. I've still got more leaves to come. So I'm expecting that this growth, based on how many roots it has in the pot, to reach this size as well. So I'm still not at the maximum that the orchid can do, but the orchid is rescued despite all the stress. I know that it's going to be okay. I am not pumping in more fertilizer at this point in time because of the climate. We are getting into cooler temperatures. This orchid is a warm to hot grower. So basically this growth right here, if it doesn't progress in the next six to eight weeks, it may stay stunted, but that is climate and season based. I still have plenty of great roots in the pot. And for that, I am so excited. So when you look at dendrobiums and the canes, check the eyes. If the eyes look chubby, big and fat, then that is going to be a real good growth. Then if the eye starts out thin, but increases in size progressively, because now there's roots in the pot from the previous growth that are healthy and can do the work, then that eye will actually start swelling based on the fertilizer that you give it and eventually you get a proper growth. The eyes are not always the indicator of what the growth can do because we can still intervene while the growth is small, immature, and we think that we need to give it more fertilizer by watching where the bracts are. And in the case of dendrobiums, by observing the thickness of the canes based on the characteristics of the orchids. Thin caned dendrobiums, let's say at the base, like a Victoria regina or a dendrobium tetragonum, they will never get stout eyes. So the attributes are important to take into consideration as well. But as long as you don't see any fertilizer accumulating on the top and you see that the growth is progressing at a normal rate, that means your fertilizer levels are spot on. Keep doing what you're doing. If you say, for example, that the eye is looking a little bit weak, but you have roots in the pot, add more fertilizer but only in a fraction. So I would not raise the fertilizer to double. I would just raise it by another third 
so that you can see if the growth responds and then becomes a little bit more stout. I personally have in here 160 parts per million based on the fact that this is a rescue orchid. I am not increasing the fertilizer at this time of year because we're heading into colder temperatures. If this were spring with roots in the pot, I would increase the fertilizer from 160 to 200, just a smidgen, and then see if I can't push this growth further. But this is not the time of year to be doing that. The most important thing is no mineral buildup on the surface of the pot. And even in many, many cases, no amount of flushing will remove that mineral buildup either. So there's a fine balance and your growths are telling you, this is good for me, I'm doing well, I'm progressing well. And the top of your pots will also always be your indicator if you're giving too much fertilizer. That is what the top of the pots will tell you. The growth won't. If I were to pump this one right here, now and to try and get it to grow even more i won't know the result until about three or four months but the salt is already accumulating in my pot so the pot is going to be your quickest indicator because orchids grow so slow you don't want to be doing damage in the pot when you see results like this using the bracts as your markers what about phalaenopsis you say aha uh -huh. It gets a little bit more difficult with Phalaenopsis to be, let's say, woohoo, look at this leaf, look at this. Except when you see a new leaf coming out of the crown and you're going, yay, new leaf. But you won't know, is it gonna make the previous leaf size until it is fully grown? However, let's put it this way. Let's rejoice that a Phalaenopsis is growing a new leaf. And if your orchid has just come new into your collection, be happy, it's growing a new leaf. That means something is happening in the pot and it's acclimating to your environment. So do not fret about how big is my leaf going to be. In my case, I know the two examples that I have brought out. I do apologize for the dusty leaves. This is today not a beauty show, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know my orchids. They've been in my collection. So if you know your orchids, you kind of know what to expect. And in my case, for example, this giraffe here has a little cakey on the side that's been growing in the past two years and I can see from the size of the previous leaf how the new leaf is doing. It's doing great. I don't want to add any more fertilizer into this pot. The mineral buildup that you see here is from days gone by. That is something I mentioned earlier. Not always is it possible to flush out excess salts from the surface of your pot once they are there it is very annoying but i have learned my lesson with regards to leka since i got this orchid and uh, 2022 my summer bloomers are going to be addressed i didn't get the opportunity this year but next year all my summer bloomers are going to be addressed and then this leka here will be gone the orchid though is doing really well i am not adding any fertilizer i'm not taking away any fertilizer because i know this mineral buildup is from year one that it is with me. You can see it hasn't really affected the orchid, but the fact that I reduced my fertilizer from the early days when I got her, she only had one fan. I do have some magnesium deficiency in the leaves, which is being corrected bit by bit. Not all in one go, it doesn't work that way. This is a long process and it may not even go away completely. But as long as the new leaves come out looking shiny green and solid, that is what I'm looking for. So fertilizer levels in this orchid are absolutely fine. Salt buildup is not to be mistaken with over fertilizing because that could just be a mistake made in how the leka was cleaned up. So this orchid is doing great. This leaf shows me it's doing great. It's bigger than the other one. And this leaf coming out here has no kinks because sometimes if there is a problem with a fertilizer level, a new leaf will have a kink. That could be lack of water, that could be lack of fertilizer. And then as it gets watered and as it gets fertilized, it grows out and the kink stays in the leaf. So that's something to look out for. But my orchid is doing fabulous. It's got another fan here on the other side. And the back leaf here also has no kink at all. There's no signs of lack of nutrition with regards to that kink that I mentioned earlier. So giraffe is doing great. When we have an orchid like a sweet memory here on the right that we also can gauge and monitor leaf size. Well, in this case, I can also say same principle applies. The salt buildup is from years gone by. 
it's not something recent. And the proof in the pudding is that this leaf here, its first new leaf of 2021, has matched the size of the leaf next to it that was last year's leaf. Still waiting for the second leaf to come. So when it comes to anticipating your growths, knowing how is the orchid performing, do I have to increase the fertilizer or not? Check the surface of your media if there is an overload of fertilizer on the media, not including the mistakes I just mentioned, but in general, if there is a salt buildup on your media, then reduce the fertilizer because the orchid is not absorbing everything that you're putting in the pot. If a growth comes out a little bit short and stunted, there's two reasons here, a repot or acclimating process. If it is short and stunted in the pot, while the orchid has been established for several years with you, then up the fertilizer a little bit. At this stage, we can still intervene. Meanwhile, be careful if you've got brand new roots growing, make sure you've got great roots in the pot so that the fertilizer you're gonna put in actually is going to be used up. But I don't want to make this too complicated. I just wanted to show what we can look for and how we can enjoy our orchids in the 11 months when they're supposed to be growing while we wait for blooms. <laughs> because <laughs> the three weeks with the blooms, they're easy. But in the meantime, I just wanted to let you know how I geek out over my orchids while they are in growth and watching the bracts, the height of the bracts, watching the salt levels on my leca, being able to gauge whether I'm going to have a superb growth that is growing to size or even bigger. And then knowing should I add more fertilizer in because maybe a growth isn't growing as big as I would like it to, all these factors make me geek out over my orchids while I wait for blooms. So I really hope that this was of interest, maybe a little bit long-winded. Speaking of wind, now that I'm almost done filming, it has died down. Typical Murphy's Law. But anyway, yeah, let me know how you bide your time waiting for blooms. Do you observe the orchids the same way I do? Or am I a little bit over the top with what I do by looking at every bract and seeing how is the orchid performing? <laughs> That's fine, let me know. I'm happy to hear what you have to say. Thank you so very, very much for watching this video. And if there was any mic disturbance, then I do apologize. Really appreciate your time, your support. Have yourselves a beautiful day. And as I always say now, on one condition, please stay safe. Take care. Bye.